Hey everyone, this is Nick, and while I'm not a keyboard nerd, I'm absolutely a computer nerd, which means I spend most of my days in front of, you guessed it, a keyboard. And System76 just sent me their launch heavy keyboard, which is a full numpad included 10 key design. But they also sent me everything in the background, no, over here. So there's the launch light and the normal launch keyboard. Right now, I'm using a faux mechanical Slimbook RGB keyboard, which is decent enough, but definitely not something mechanical fans would love. So let's see how this heavy boy compares to its smaller siblings, and how much I like it. And also how much I like today's sponsor, OnlyOffice. Thanks to OnlyOffice for sponsoring this video. OnlyOffice is the only Office suite I use on all my Linux PCs nowadays. It's open source, it's fast, it looks good, and it's super compatible with Microsoft Office formats. You can download it for free and run it locally on any computer, whatever the operating system, including Android and iOS. Or you can couple that with a free personal cloud that lets you edit online and can be connected to a lot of storage services you might already use, like Google Drive, Dropbox, Nextcloud, OneDrive, and a lot more. This personal cloud has received a big update recently with a dark theme, a free library of templates, it supports a ton more languages, and it has a lot of hotkeys you can use to navigate on top of having an interface refresh. If you need a powerful, cloud-ready, and compatible Office suite for Linux or any other operating system, I don't think you can do better than only Office. So head over to the link in the description below to download it or create your own personal cloud. Okay, so this is the System76 launch heavy keyboard. It was just released today and it's already available from System76's website. It works on Linux, on Windows, on macOS, and just to be fully transparent, it was sent me as a review unit, so I have to send it back later, just like both other keyboards in the background, the light and the normal one. I don't get to keep them. So, the Launch Heavy is a full 10 key design, complete with numpad and media keys, something that was missing from the previous Launch keyboards, whether it was the standard or the light variant. It comes in a US QWERTY layout by default, in ANSI. ANSI? ANSI? The not ISO layout. But, as we'll see, you can basically do anything you want with that layout. It's not that big as far as full-size keyboards go, with dimensions of 39cm by 13.5 and 2.8cm in height. For people who use the Imperial system, that's 15.5 inches by 5.32 and 1 inch in height. It might be relatively small, but it is very, very heavy. Who could have guessed? That keyboard weighs 1.3 kilograms or 2.8 pounds, and that's due to the insane build. The whole frame is aluminium and the back is held in place with eight huge screws. This thing will not budge or bend or flex or slide around on your desk. Now, of course, if you carry your keyboard around with you at all times, it's basically a second laptop in your backpack and you will probably be better served with the launch light. And in that case, stick around because we're gonna take a look at this one as well in the video. Now, the layout itself will probably feel weird at first. I'm more of a French AZERTY layout dude, being French myself, but I'm used to QWERTY keyboards on most devices I review, and this one is definitely not standard. Your keys underneath the TAB key are indented to the right, and everything from the ENTER key is indented to the left, with the arrow keys touching the SHIFT key. The home row floats up all by itself, and then you have the numpad in a compact rectangle. The function keys are just FN keys, you don't get any specific logos or pictograms on them for system functions, and you also get two spacebar keys. This will absolutely feel weird at first, and it absolutely did for me. But after a few days, it made sense. You never hit the spacebar key right smack in the middle. You hit it from the side with one of your thumbs. And honestly, having two different ones for your two different thumbs is probably a better idea than having a full-length spacebar. Anyway, this layout is just the base default one. All keycaps are removable, and you can completely remap the whole keyboard thanks to a configuration tool, which we will also look at in a bit. My review unit came with the Kale Box Silent Pink switches, which I kinda like. They are linear, which means the stroke will be smooth all the way, without a bump or a click. 
They're quiet enough for a mechanical keyboard, although the key travel on that board isn't huge compared to other keyboards I've tried. You can also get Kalebox Jade, Royale, or Silent Brown switches, which I have on the standard and light keyboard I'll take a look at in a minute. It is a very pleasant typing experience. Even when you really get into the flow of things, you just move the keys. The keyboard doesn't move at all. It doesn't bend, it doesn't flex. It's just super sturdy and solid and I really like it. The keyboard is wired through USB-C. It doesn't have any wireless capabilities and it's also a USB hub with two additional USB-C ports, which are 3.2 Gen 1 and two USB-A ports, also 3.2 Gen 1 so you can plug your mouse, charge your phone, or anything in between. And the keyboard also has per-key RGB, which you can adjust using the configuration utility. Of course, since it's a modular keyboard, you also get a ton of stuff in the box. First, you have two USB-C cables, one USB-A to USB-C, and one USB-C to USB-C. Both are braided and pretty long, and they feel high quality. You also get a keycap remover tool and a lot of additional keycaps you can use to make your keyboard your own. There are additional arrow keys in a nice vibrant blue or a deep red. The escape key also has these two colors and you also get larger escape keys in all three colors, brown, blue and red. So you can swap the one slot escape key for a two slot if you want and map that using the configurator tool. There are also longer shift, backspace and function keys and a bunch of cool ones you can use for your super key or anything else, like a System76 logo, a Pop! OS logo, some robots, or a spaceship. And if you don't like the colors, the fonts, or the size, well, they're replaceable, so you can always bring your own custom set of keycaps, especially if you want a different layout than the QWERTY one. In the box, you also get two small magnetically attached bars of aluminium with rubber feet that you can just slot in at the back of the keyboard to raise it by a 15 degrees angle if you prefer typing with the keyboard a bit higher. It's an interesting design. There are basically three sizes of keys on that keyboard design. There's the one slot, the two slot, and the three slot. And you can hot swap them all you want, all you like, as long as you have the keycaps to go over them. And then you can map them in real time with the configurator utility. So let's talk about that then. So by now it should be clear that this keyboard doesn't reach its full potential unless you use the configuration tool. It's available in the Pop Shop for Pop OS users, or you can download it off their website as an app image, a DMG for Mac users, and an MSI installer for Windows users. It's a super visual tool with the full layout of your keyboard on display and a list of actions you can map to each key. Click the key you want to change, then click the action it does, and the layout will reflect that change and be applied immediately to the keyboard. No saving or applying action needed. You can select multiple keys to change their actions all at once using shift and clicking as well. And what's more, you can configure the keyboard with four different layers, which all have their own set of actions per keys. By default, all these layers will reuse the main first layer, so you don't have to remap everything for each layer. And if you change something in the first layer, it will automatically be reflected on all the other three. This lets you just change a few keys per layer if you want, or have a completely different layout, like a French one, for example. And more importantly, you can set RGB patterns per layer. So yes, you could use these four different layouts just to have different color patterns vibrating all over a keyboard and distracting you if that's something you want. By default, you get a pattern called space-time, which pulsates light in a rainbow effect, but that's pretty distracting. Pretty and distracting, I mean. You can change that for a lot of other different patterns. Or you can set a global solid color for the whole keyboard, or a solid color for each key. In that case, click the keys you want and set the color using the color wheel. You can also change the brightness of it all, and you can do that for each of the four layers. And the best thing is, all these layers and all these RGB settings and key maps, they're all saved directly to the keyboard, not to your computer. Which means that you can just unplug the keyboard, bring it to another computer, and it will have the exact same mappings, layers, and RGB patterns. That's super awesome. Another important thing to mention is the fully open design of that keyboard. The chassis design is open source. You can download the CAD files and mill or 3D print your own. 
The PCB design is also fully open. You can access it on GitHub. And so is the firmware and the configuration tool. So I just love the launch heavy keyboard. The launch, the basic one, never appealed to me because it doesn't have a numpad. And I need a numpad. I'm French. Doing number keys is hard. You need to use shift and the number key. A numpad is a time saver for everything I do. And also it's super solid. It's very sturdy. You get a nice choice of switches and you can configure it any way you want. It's a really, really good board. But now let's compare it to its smaller siblings. All other launch keyboards, the regular one and the light, have the same advantages. They've got a fully open design, access to the configuration tool, a choice of four different switch types and additional keycaps in the box with the keycap removing tool and the two USB-C cables. Where they differ, of course, is in the number of keys. The launch, the standard one, is a 10 key less design, so without the numpad. But apart from that, it has all the same great features, including the USB-C and USB-A ports. It doesn't get the additional super key with icons on it, though, and its razor bar is a single piece, not two small ones. My review unit of the launch keyboard came with the Kale Box Jade switches, which feel amazing, with a short travel distance before you have to push a bit harder to get that click, which signifies the switch actually actuated. It feels super good, but it's also noisy as hell, so there is no way I could use that myself. If you have colleagues or your work in the same office as other people, I give them about 10 minutes before they staple your head to your desk if you start using that thing. Not that I would know what it feels like because I work from home, all alone, and I don't have colleagues. Oh man, I wish I had somebody to staple my head to my desk. Now, since that launch keyboard is smaller, it's also lighter, at right under a kilogram, which makes it a bit easier to carry around. As per the light, it's an ultra-small design, with the numbers row and the function row merged into one. It also, of course, doesn't have a numpad, but it has all the same accessories, additional keycaps and cables, RGB, and access to the configuration tool, like its bigger siblings. What it doesn't have, though, is the USB hub. It's just one USB-C cable to plug it in, and that's it. My review unit came with the Kale Box Royal switches, which are tactile. You have an initial bump to pass when you press a key, and that's when it actuates. It requires a bit more force to push the key down, but you don't have to press it all the way to get a result. So it's probably better if you like to type really fast with really hard strokes on the keys. Personally, after using the Silent Pink, the Jade and the Royal switches, my favorites are the Silent Pink. I would really enjoy using the Jade switches because I love the feel of pressing the keys, but the sound would drive me completely insane. And they also have the brown silent switches, which are tactile, but also a little bit more quiet. I'm not gonna lie, these keyboards are pricey. The light is 200 US dollars. The regular launch keyboard is 285 US dollars. And at the time I'm writing this script, the heavy's price hasn't been announced yet, although I would expect it to be around 350 US dollars. But what you get for that price is actually really, really good value. You get a super solid board, a solid choice of four different switch options which should work for basically everyone. You get a ton of keycap replacement if you need, you get the ability to swap everything out and you get the ability to configure everything with four different layers, saving that on the board, taking all that config on the go, including your RGB patterns. It's a great value for the price. Now, after using these for a few weeks, going back to my old faux mechanical keyboard, feels like a huge downgrade. Unfortunately, while you can get one shipped to Europe, the shipping costs are prohibitive right now. So if you want one, it's probably better to wait for System76 to open their distribution center in Europe, which they've talked about this year. If you're in Northern America, no worries, it's gonna ship to you with like the regular price. If you like keyboards, if you like open source, and if you like gear configuration, then I don't think there's a better option than these keyboards. If you have the cash, that is. And I don't think there's a better option than today's sponsor. Tuxedo makes laptops and desktops that ship with Linux pre-installed. And that's probably a way better option than buying any old Windows laptop off the shelves 
and hoping, praying and researching the whole internet to make sure that it actually runs Linux well and that everything is well supported. When you buy from Tuxedo, you know that Linux is going to run on that hardware because it has been picked specifically to run Linux out of the box. They have a big range of devices that they ship worldwide and they're all pretty configurable and repairable with options for all the internal components plus the ability to have your own keyboard layout laser etched on the keys or your logo laser etched on the back of your laptop, for example. So if you need a new device, you want to make sure that it runs Linux perfectly and you also want to support Linux development, which Tuxedo does, click the link in the description below and get yourself a Tuxedo laptop or desktop. They're really, really good. So thanks everyone for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, well, you can also dislike and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you want to support the channel, there's a super thanks button underneath this YouTube video. There's a PayPal link in the description. And there are also links to my Patreon memberships and YouTube memberships. Both get access to a weekly podcast every Monday, where I talk about Linux, tech, open source, the channel, my personal life, everything. And you also get to vote on the next topics that I'll cover for the next month. So if you're interested, both links are down there as well. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.